Hallelujah.
I say, let God be God. Hallelujah. Let him have his way. I don't, I can't plan anything, but let God have his way tonight. He said to be prepared, Ernie. He said be ready in season and out of season. I should have been prepared a long time before I got here tonight. I should have been getting rooted in his word. It ought to be instantaneous in season. Right now, the word the Spirit wants to bring. Amen. But God knows all things. Yeah. I'm not saying that you can't go to him last Sunday and start asking him, Lord, what do your people need? That's right. Because God will speak to you if you'll sit down and listen. He will. He will. Now, everybody stand and let's read this scripture. This, this is God's word. And I think that God wanted that you'd hear this tonight. Just be reminded. It ain't something new to many of you. But if you go to verse 28, it says this. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, uh -huh. and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just come before you tonight, God. And Lord, we just want to get in your presence, oh Lord. Lord, we don't come for any other reason, God, but Lord, we come to get in your presence tonight. Father, we come for to, to be fed tonight, God, in your holy word, God, your scriptures, God. And Lord, and it's a living word, Father God, that Lord, that it would penetrate the heart, God, and the soul and the mind, God, that it would that it would lift us up and encourage us, Father God. And, and Lord, that if conviction need to fall, God, that Lord, let, let it let it be taken care of tonight that we repent, Father. And then we turn around and turn back to you, O oh God. Lord, lead me, Father. Lord, use me tonight, O oh God, in thy name. Hallelujah. Father, will you increase and me decrease, God? Lord, have your way. Let the Spirit have its way in here tonight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Glory. Hallelujah. Did anybody feel a really heavy burden? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. But, but then, the King of Kings. Yes. When we started praising the King of Kings, came yes. in and he lifted that heavy burden Woo. off of me. He lifted that heavy burden off Mary Ann. Yes. Mary Ann was telling me and praising. I said, You go on and preach. You go on and preach. I can feel the power of God coming off of her, the anointing. And, and the, she just, Woo. she was on fire over here. And God was having his way. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Glory to God. I tell you what, I'm glad he came in. Yes. Man. I'm glad that he came. Yes. I didn't like that heavy burden. I didn't like that burden. When God's people was in Egypt for 400 years, they carried a heavy burden. And you know what? God heard their cry. And we cried out and we lifted up our friends tonight. I'll be honest with you, I was sitting there feeling sick. That's the truth. I was feeling sick. I thought something was coming over me. I thought Brother Larry's been sick. And now I feel sick. Praise God. Do you know what? The scripture says, Jesus said that in this world, he said you'll have tribulation. Amen. He said, but be of good cheer. I, for I have overcome the world. Amen. He is Savior. He is that power that can break every chain. He can set you free of every bondage, Amen. every sickness, every disease. He's here tonight to set us free. Hallelujah. You know, but you got an enemy. You got an enemy. God started speaking to this me on the way over here. Go back to Isaiah 14, I think it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. God knows. He knows all things. Kennedy's been stricken with uh, with strep throat. And I thought, oh God, I'm coming down with it. But you know what? I rebuke that. I rebuke that. She's healed in the name of Jesus. That little baby is healed in the name of Jesus. God is still able. He is still able, and he's still healing. He's still on the throne. He ain't been removed. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He was before time was. I love him. 
I love him tonight, my Savior, my King, my strong deliverer, my high tower, my shield, and my buckler. Praise God. He is able. Man. He is able tonight. Whatever you got tonight, just bring it up before the Lord. Send it up before the throne tonight. God has not forgotten his people. He is here. Ernie said he danced in the fire. Praise God. If we're going to dance, we better learn to dance in the fire. Amen. 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 Somebody said that, that you need to learn to dance in the rain. Yeah, come on. I profess to you tonight, you better learn to dance in the fire. Amen. If you don't learn to dance in the fire, you ain't going to do a lot of dancing. Mom. The book of Job said that man born a woman was few a days and full of trouble. Praise God. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be famines. There's going to be storms. These things are going to come. But Jesus said that his yoke was easy. Now how is that? We talked about the God of peace. Man. God, we can have joy unspeakable. Come on. We can dance in this storm. Hallelujah. Because I know that that journey is going to be worth it, Ernie. That journey's going to be worth it. It's Hallelujah. going to be worth it. When I see Jesus sitting on that throne, it's going to be worth it. I'm going to wear the carpet out around from here tonight. Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to find Isaiah here in a minute, too. I know it comes Praise right after Psalms and Proverbs. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Bear with me. I'm going. Especially when we get there. I think I know where I'm going. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I want to point something out tonight. Something that's probably, it may not be revelation to you, but that's okay. Sometimes we just, we need to get a hold of what we know. Sometimes we need to lift it up. See, God's word is powerful and it's a living word. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of those promises. But I went to Luke, I went to, to Isaiah 14, and it said this. It said that um, Satan, this is where it was talking about Satan. It said, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. 15 or 16 says, so they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Yes, hallelujah. See, God, God is not the creator. See, it was Satan that was cast out uh, and cast down to the earth. I, I read in the scriptures later on, uh, Jesus said, uh, I saw Satan fall to the ground uh, as lightning. It was Satan that was cast out. Uh, we know who the victor is. Uh, we know where the victory is. Uh, we have the power. Uh, Jesus said, if I go away, uh, I'll send you another power. Uh, we have that power tonight. Uh, he gave us power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. He said, not the glory that the demons are subject unto you, uh, but that your name is written in the book of life. Uh, hallelujah. When I see Jesus uh, sitting on that throne, uh, but the enemy has no power over me, uh, I know this. I know this. We are. We are troubled on every side. We are troubled on every side. We're getting attacked from every direction. Who ain't? Who ain't? Who ain't had friends, and I don't take this lightly, guys. I know. I know that when we have a loved one pass away, that leaves a that leaves a quite a great yes. hope. Yes. That ain't soon going to be filled. Come on. You know, it leaves a great hope. When our loved ones, I, I have a friend that was in prison for several years, and his family had to do without him. You know, all of these <laughs> things are the things of the enemy. Yes. It's it said that he shook. Yeah. It said that. Gosh, help me, Lord. Yeah. Said he made the earth to tremble and did shake the kingdom. Uh -huh. yeah. See, there's this. 
the enemy is having his way. Right. The enemy is having his way on this earth. Amen. See, God, God has all power, but he gave us a choice. Right. Right. We, can follow, we can follow God yeah. and chase Amen. after him, Amen. or we can follow the enemy. Today. Amen. We can follow the enemy. He said we're servants. If, we, if we're a servant to sin... Then our master is Satan. Okay, right. after we've been born again early, uh, we can't turn back uh, any man uh, yeah. that has put his hand to the plow and turns back uh, is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Many will say, uh, well, we're all just those sinner men uh, saved by grace. Uh, well, I know that's true. Uh, that is true. Uh, it took the blood of a Savior. Uh, it took the blood uh, of a spotless lamb. Uh, that any of us could be saved. Because none of us, our righteousness is filthy rags. But I want to tell you that the Word says, if you'll study on, and, and we're not preaching to itching ears tonight. The Word says that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yeah. 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 See, when the woman at the well, whenever Jesus, that had five husbands, Jesus, I, I believe that I'm quoting this correctly, he told her, go and sin no more. Uh -huh. I can tell you right now that, that there was something that happened to me when, the whole, when I asked God to save me and the Holy Spirit filled me, yeah. there was something that happened to me. Amen. I can't even walk in the gas station and buy a six-pack of beer. I can't even do that. I don't have to drink it. I can't even go in there and buy it. There was something that happened to me. So I was saying, I've heard Pastor Larry say this many times. If you can still do those things, Amen. you might, we'd be taking a hard look at yourself. Come on. You might better be spending some more time on your knees. Man. You might better be calling out to God, yeah. crying out to God. Yeah. You need to find him while he is near because I think you still didn't get it. Yeah. If you can still do those things, I don't think you've got it. Yeah. Man. You know, if you're going out and you're getting high every day, or you're going out and you're cheating on your wife, or you're going out and you're cheating on your husband, I don't think you've got it. Come on. Come on. You need to be asking God and begging God, forgive me. Yeah. I can't Come do on. it. I can't do it. I can't do those things uh, that Satan would have me to do. Because uh, I can't serve two masters. Uh, I can just pick one. And I chose mine. Uh, I got to make up mine. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what he's called me to do. I ain't going back. I done been there. I ain't going back. Uh, there is a better way. Uh, his name is Jesus. Come on. I ain't going back. Hallelujah. He'll, Satan can shake the earth. Yes. Come on. And that's okay. That's okay. I can have joy unspeakable. Yeah. I can have peace in the middle of the storm. Peter yeah. was sleeping between those two Roman guards. I can have joy unspeakable. Man. I think it was Paul and Silas. What happened, Ernie? What happened when they were singing and praising God? I think the shackles fell off. Come on. And they were set free. Paul said that that he forgot about those things which were behind. And then he was reaching forward to those things which were ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he learned to be content in all situations. Amen. 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 we got to learn to be content in all situations. My bank account might be empty. Come on. I might have had to go to the hospital last week. But I need to be content uh, because this world is yeah. not my home. Uh, it's Amen. a temporary uh, place. Uh, Amen. I'm going to a better place. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm staying here. Uh, let the enemy work. Let the enemy fight. Uh, let him resist me. Uh, let him war against me. Uh, but I ain't staying here. Uh, my God is greater. Amen. My God is greater. He can, he can shake the earth if you want to. Uh, he can make it tremble. Uh, I got something better. Uh, this earth ain't got nothing for me. It's temporary. It's got nothing for me. No. What's it say over in 1 Peter? I ain't got a single note. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, here's a good one. Just open your Bible and you'll find a good one. Amen. 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 John 19. I'm skipping around. Oh. Praise God. John 19, 1 says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Yeah. Wow! Uh -huh. 
I did. I read that today too this morning. I thought, Lord, I'll just preach on that. We'll just preach on that a while. I ain't never heard anybody really preach that one. Everybody will jump on it for a minute. But you know what it's what I like is? See, I thought about Brother Brother Larry back here being sick. Because it was that scourging. It was that scourging. He said, By my stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. By my stripes, you were healed. Everyone across his back that cut and splattered the blood. By those stripes, they were not for nothing. They were not for naught. But there was a purpose. It was the blood of that lamb. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. I believe it. I believe it. I don't, I don't receive the things of the enemy. You guys prayed for my shoulder a couple of Sundays ago. I get sick, no glory. Come on. Uh, since then, I, I shoveled a two-ton of gravel out of the back of my truck. I busted wood for a couple of hours with that shoulder. Praise God. Really? Felt like it was torn in half. But glory to God, I give no glory to the enemy. Hallelujah. I get under my feet, Satan. Yes. Get under my feet. Yes. I got something in me. I, it's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I go right here. I, if he comes around here, I, he's a trespasser. Yes. He's a trespasser. You got no right. You got no power. You got no authority. Go! In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I rebuke the enemy tonight. I don't lift him up, but I rebuke him. And I'll be honest with you, I don't fear the enemy. I can remember if I had a nightmare when I was growing up, guess who was in it? Hallelujah. Never hunting nobody but that devil. Amen. But whenever I got filled with the Holy Spirit, whenever God got a hold of me and I committed myself to him, I had to fear that enemy no more. Amen. I had to fear that enemy no more. I'm going to tell you all a testimony. I, I, I wish at this one time that you guys had a had one of those screens where we could put things up and show because I would like to show you a picture. A couple of years ago, I was in Ethiopia up on this mountain. Those mountains get about 12,000, 13,000 feet. That's like the Rockies. And I was up on this mountain and there was no vehicles. It was what they called a marketplace. What they called a marketplace. The Ethiopians don't have cars in these real rural areas. And we drove out away from the city like 12 hours up into the mountains. They don't have cars. The only cars that were in that, in that marketplace in that village were ours. We had two vans. I traveled there with 10 or, like 10 or 12 people. But I want to tell you, and I bring this up because I'm talking about, about you. We're not glorying that we can trample upon the scorpion. Right. But I'm telling you that you have authority. Yeah. Amen. If the Holy Spirit abides in you, you have Amen. authority. Amen. See, I was up on that mountain. I was up on that mountain in this in this. Village, and I, I'd like to show you the picture because somebody took the picture. And I found this this like rock mound that made a perfect pulpit yes. on this on this mound. And some I thought about getting on this tin roof, but I, it probably would have fell through. <laughs> we got to exercise a little common sense. Amen. <clears throat> but I got up on that rock mound and I started preaching. And I had to have an interpreter because they don't speak our language. I think what they call Aramaic. And so I've got an interpreter, and Ethiopians are different than Americans. Americans, for the most part, we've got like this three foot of personal space. You know, if you, if you get any closer than that, you're, you're really intruding in my space. Well, Ethiopians don't, don't honor that system. Ethiopians are very touchy-feely, and they're like right here. They're right here. You can't, you can't really preach if you've got a thousand people. Right here. So those 10 or 12 people circled around me and kind of made a barrier between me and the crowd. And I wish I had a picture of it. See, we, there wasn't a poster up that said, hey, that Jesus is going to, that we're going to come and share the gospel with you this evening. There wasn't any signs up or anything. We just went into this marketplace where there was a lot of people. And we got up on this, on this little knob, this little knoll, and started sharing the gospel with them. And 
the, the thing is, is that this area was actually, it was primarily Muslim. At three o'clock in the morning, seems like everywhere I've been in Ethiopia, and I don't make this up, at three o'clock in the morning, I can hear the Muslims start chanting. And they'll wake you up, and you can hear them chanting. And they, to me, to me, it's a very devilish Amen. sound. Amen. Amen. See, it's an antichrist right. sound. Right. Right. And so when I start hearing that, it's very, it's like there's a spirit, you got a spiritual battle, a spiritual yeah. warfare that's yeah. going on, yeah. big time. Yeah. See, because we're going into their area, right. we're going into the stronghold of the right. enemy to go in there and share the light of Christ, but, to go in there and share the gospel. And so I've got all these Muslims, a thousand of them, standing there looking at me, and I'm telling them about Jesus. Right. And sometimes you don't know what to think. Sometimes, and this was one of those times. Because I got ten people and there's a thousand of them. And I, I feel like some of them are looking at me kind of hateful. Quite a few of them, honestly. But I'm still telling them about Jesus. And all of a sudden, a man comes up and starts talking to my interpreter. And I'll just tell you what happened. Because I didn't, I didn't understand the language. I didn't know what was being said. But anyway, he said we had to stop. That we had to quit. That we couldn't do that there in this place where we were. Bless you, Lord. Well, this guy was dressed in plain clothes. No idea who he is, but evidently he, he must have had some authority. Because he's saying, hey, you can't do this here. you got to stop. Our vans, we had two vans are down the mountain half a mile. And uh, one of the guys, actually I wasn't the leader on that team. The leader on that team starts arguing with that man. Well, I can tell you, we didn't win. We decided, okay. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're 10,000 miles from home, Amen. in a place like that, yes. they bury you, burn you, do whatever they want to do with you. Nobody will ever see or hear from you again. We know that a team of Americans and Swedes went out, and they never came back. Amen. Because we'd actually, we had like a base, and we had drove out on dirt roads two and a half hours from that base. And unbeknownst to us, we'd actually drove out of the area that we were supposed to be in. See, we had an area that we were allowed to go and to preach and to share the gospel, but we actually, we didn't realize it, but we were outside of that area. And so now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we've decided we're going to comply and we're going to do what they would have us to do. Amen? Yeah, I mean. So, as we're all, as we start to, to go down the crowd, here comes two guys that never had, if they had a gun, I didn't see it. They had a car, a motorcycle, or a bicycle. I didn't see it. Like the only thing you saw on this mark would be goats, oxen, donkeys, and things like that. But these two guys actually had uniform police shirts on. And they had these big long, I'm not making this stuff up. They had, they had these big long poles that were probably about this long. And I'm telling you, right, right beside of me, they just started swarping on people and hitting people. Because they were breaking up that crowd and they started welling on people. Now, that's Ernie, this is shaping up to look like one of those nightmares you'd hear about on, on CNN or Fox News. They were not playing around. They were not playing around and we were somewhere where we wasn't supposed to be. I want to tell you that my whole group, I started looking around to see where my group was and we all, we all continued down the mountain while this was going on. I'll be honest, I mean, I. I, I had to step out of the way one time. That's how close they were to be welling on people. I didn't know they were going to be welling on me or not. But when I saw that stick coming, I stepped aside and, and kept going down the mountain. I'm just telling you the truth. And when I got down there, I got down there to the van, this blind man, and I'm telling you, you read about in the Bible about Jesus being thrown. Well, they see us come from America, and they believe, you know, many of them believe with everything in them. That's why so many of them get healed. Because they have faith and they believe and they want us to pray with them. And there was, I'm telling you what happened. And we got back down there to the van and the police, these policemen are having a chat with some of the people that were with me. And the blind man grabs me and wants me to pray with him. You know what I did? Now I'm the guy that was just preaching when they came up here and they broke it all up. And I'm the guy that, that, that caused this whole mess. I'll tell you, I'll leave my hands on him, and I started praying. I said, oh, God, 
I said, Lord, I know you're in control. And God, I know that you sent me here. And no matter what happens, God, I'm trusting you. God, if they do take me out back and feed me to a hippopotamus, I'm trusting you. God, if they put me on the cross and they crucify me, I'm trusting you. God, I'm not going to fear what they can do to me. And I laid hands on that blind man and I prayed. And I'll be honest with you, I, I read in the Bible that I think it was uh, Elijah who, who laid down on a man and, and blew in his mouth and, and nothing happened. And so then he did it again and the next time the guy sneezed three times or something and comes back alive. It was a dead man. So I said, if Elijah had to pray more than once, maybe I should try again. So I laid hands on that man and I started praying again in the name of Jesus. I said, I, I rebuke this blind spirit and I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Go. And I'm praying and I look up and this man, and I start, he can't speak my language and I can't his, but I can still see that he couldn't see. And so I thought, okay, I'll try, let's do this again. In the name of Jesus. And I start praying. And somebody tapped me on the shoulder and they said, we got to go. And I looked around and they took everybody that was with me except for three women and one other guy. They took them to jail. They were gone. They were gone. They were not there. You talk about your nightmare coming. Huh? These guys. They were gone. They took them. Now, why didn't they take me? Come on. Why didn't they take me? I don't know. I feel like I feel like God, while I was there, that God just put his hand over me. And, and he put his hand over his servant. And, yes. he, and then they got, I don't know, they couldn't even see me. Amen. 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 They didn't even see me standing there praying for this guy. Right. When they just broke up this crowd and took everybody else to jail. Amen. But they couldn't even see me standing there praying for this man. Amen. I believe that. Now, believe now we're out there in the middle of this market. And we have two vans. It's me, one guy, and three women left. Everybody else got took to jail. And and I, I, we all go pile in the van, because that's what they told us to do, go get in the van and wait. And for whatever reason, we're right in the middle of the road. It's a big rocky dirt road in a marketplace where goats and cattle travel all the time. And we're in the van, and, it's, and there it's probably 80 degrees. And the, one of the women that was with me, her son was one of the people they took. So she, out of, the, out of the three women and the one other men, she was the one that was having a little bit of a panic attack. But it only lasted for a minute. Like Paul and Silas, I want to tell you, we began, we just continued to praise God right in the middle of all that turmoil, right in the middle of all that, all that chaos. We just continued to praise God. We started singing, my God is greater, my God is greater. And, and we started singing every gospel song we could think of and praising and lifting up the name of Jesus. And we were there for like three or four hours in the middle of that street. And I want to tell you, like I said, they do not respect that space. And so they, they, we were like a circus come to town. I mean, they were all piled on top of that van. And every now and then, because everybody was smothered to death, I would get out and I would push them back. Because they were right on top of us, climbing on top of the van. And, and you couldn't breathe but I want you to know that the reason I bring all that up, the reason I bring all that up is it's pretty clear that I'm here with you tonight. Amen. Anything in the world could have happened, but I'm here with you tonight. I want you to know that there is a God in heaven and that he has got that you in the palm of his hand. And he will not lose you. He will keep you to the end if you'll just follow him. See, God kept me through all that. That may sound strange to you, but I was never afraid. And all everything I just told you is true. Bless you, Lord. I was never afraid, not one Hallelujah. time. And it wasn't because I'm some big brave guy. Come on. The only reason I have is because the Lord thy God yeah, and yeah. told me. He said, "Fear not." He said, "I'm not giving thee a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind." If I got to get taken out of this world, what better way to go? I want to be turned up in a chariot of fire. What better way I, I mean that I, than serving God? If I gotta go, I, I might as well go serving God. Larry, you've been under attack. The enemy has come after you. He's attacking you. You're preaching the gospel. You're preaching the truth. The enemy don't want that. You don't want that out there. Get 
come against you. Hallelujah. But you got the victory. Yeah. You got the victory. Yeah. Yeah. You got the victory. Yeah. You got the victory. Yeah. You got the victory. Yeah. the fiery darts yeah. of the devil. You got that helmet of salvation. Because yeah. he'll attack your mind yeah. if you don't get rooted right here. Man. You got to have it. You got to have it. Because where does everything come from? It starts somewhere. See, the, the rottenness and the evil and debauchery and all those things. It's not in the alcohol or anything. Come on. That's right. right. That's Come on. It's right here. Right. Amen. See, a glass of wine will never send a man to hell. Hallelujah. It's the evil in your heart. That's right. Hallelujah. It's the Bless evil in your heart. It's not the wine. That's it. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. It says in... in First Peter. Thank you, Jesus. It says in First Peter five seven, it says, "Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you." Yeah. Friends, don't be troubled tonight, but trust in God. You may be attacked physically, but trust in God. You may be attacked financially, but trust in God. Hallelujah. The enemy is going to come against you, and you got nothing to worry about. Nothing. To if God be for you, who can be against you? Yes. Amen. 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 Power yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. You got to call and be connected to that power. You got to be connected to that power. You are. Don't worry about nothing. But by prayer and supplication, yes. don't worry about nothing. Yes. You may your finances may be bad. They may be repoing your car. But just like it, just like they took it, another one can come. That's right. Amen. Well, your house today, but just Amen. like they took it, another one will come. Amen. You say your health may fail today, but God can oh, give you now. Oh, he said, sorrow and joy will yeah. be now, but joy cometh in the morning. I'm telling Hallelujah. you. Yeah. Yeah. My, my heart got so filled earlier this week. It was just, it was the wildest thing how memories can take you to a place. I've had a, I've got a lot of bad memories. I've got some good memories. Amen. I like what my old buddy Jensen Franklin said one time. He said the reason that Satan's always bringing up your past is because you ain't giving him no new material. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's don't give him anything new. Right. Yeah. Right. But I, here, I mean, you talk about pulling on my heartstrings. Now, I was, my phone was so full of pictures and videos and things like that that I didn't have room to take one picture. And in my job, I needed to be able to take a picture. So I sat down for a few hours with my computer and my phone, and I started deleting pictures and videos and stuff off my phone to make room. But while I was doing that, I came across a picture that was taken on June the 16th of 2008. And why is that significant? I'll tell you why that was significant. Because the enemy had tried to destroy me and my wife. My wife, as you guys know, laid in a hospital for about two months. And about six weeks of that two months on a ventilator with a tube down her throat. Her body swelled twice in size so much that her tongue swelled out of her mouth. Some blood poured out of her. But before it was all said and done, I'm telling you, it was sickening. I don't know how it could be. She, when, when she came out, they pulled that tube out of her throat. And she began to breathe on her own. Praise, praise be, glory to God. She began to breathe on her arm. She was so weak. Because I'm going to tell you, your muscles will disappear on you so yes, quick will, right? that you won't believe it. Yes, she could not raise her hand that high. Praise there was nothing left but skin and bones. I'm serious. I, I would look at her and think, oh God, how can somebody in a hospital get in this kind of shape? How can somebody in a hospital get in this kind of shape? But the picture, the picture was taken on June the 16th of 2008. She was still in a walker. But God had brought her back. Amen. God had delivered her. He didn't let the enemy take her. Like in that village, God had his hand. He said, Satan, get your hands off of them. I got a plan for their life. Amen. You can't have them. Back on Satan. They belong to me. They belong to the kingdom there. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Because God has a plan. He's got a plan for this church. 
church yes, in Esco County, yes, I will assure you. Yes, Bethlehem uh, was but a little place. Uh, but out of it uh, came Jesus. Uh, uh, Lord, Man. Uh, our Savior. Uh, he was the smallest of 10,000 for Bethlehem. Yeah. God can use this place. Yes, Amen. There could be a Billy Graham rise up out of this place. Yes. Yes. Sister Sheila may be teaching Woo. one of these kids right now. Come on. That's going to do great. Yeah. He filled football stadiums yeah. telling people about Jesus Hallelujah. and people getting filled with the Holy Ghost Thank and rebuking the Thank enemy and increasing the kingdom of God and advancing the kingdom of God yeah. and strengthening yeah. God's kingdom. Yeah. Could, could come from right here. Yeah. Could come from right here with these children. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. I never dreamed. You guys, you guys all put in money for me to go to Ethiopia the last time I went. I don't know that we ever talked about it. But I, I had the opportunity one night to stand on the platform, which is something I, in the past, haven't done a lot of. But I'm standing on the platform, and the man of God hands me the mic, and he says, lead these people in salvation. There was 30 or 40,000 of them. Can you imagine? More people than you can fit in Rupp Arena. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hey, would you believe it? Now, if you guys saw where I came from, Mommy. I'm muck style. I'm plowed with a, with a pony. Bless the you. outhouse was 100 feet around the hill. I know very well what a slop jar is yep. in the middle of the night when it's zero degrees out and you don't want to walk to the toilet. Their slop jar wasn't nothing fancy. It was a five-gallon bucket. You hear me? But if God can take me uh, and do those things, uh, see, because the truth of the matter is, uh, it ain't me but him in me. Amen. See, with God, said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are hard. Amen. How hard was it? How hard was it for that to happen? Little sister? How hard was it? I was standing in Walmart of all places, and a man just came back from Ethiopia, and he was telling me about all the miracles that the lame had walked. Oh, I love what John sent his disciples to see Jesus. And he wanted to know, art thou really the Christ? And he said, go and tell John that the blind see, and the dead hear, and the dead are raised. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? I love it. I love it. But the reason I tell you this is because he was telling me what all the miracles that he saw. And you know what I said? It was this hard. This hard. In, in an instant. I said, the next time you go, I want to go with you. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise what do you think he said? Hallelujah. Come on. Okay. I'll let you know. Praise God. I've been three times now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. With men, this is impossible. My dad was killed in the coal mines when I was 12 years old. My mom had no car, or no driver's license, no job. Guys, I'm not lifting me up. I'm just saying, if God can use me, He can use anybody. Man. There ain't nothing holding you back but maybe a lack of faith. You need to have faith. If we could see it, we wouldn't need faith. Faith is the substance of things unseen. Man. That's what you have to have faith and believe. Praise God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I did not have a message prepared tonight. But God is able. I thought about, I think it was, was it Zacchaeus that went that ran ahead of the crowd because he was of low stature? And so he ran ahead of the crowd in his gown or his robe. And Zacchaeus, the little man, is running because he's going to see Jesus. He's determined that he's going to see Jesus. And I think he climbed up in the sycamore tree. He climbed out on the limb. And Jesus saw him. And he knew his name. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. He said, tonight I abide in your house. Amen. I think when sometimes when we go out on a limb in faith, that's when God is going to, is going to, going to take over. Amen. Because I knew that I didn't have the power of myself. I knew that I didn't have the strength of myself. But it was it was God, yeah. and, and that God would, would move. Hallelujah. 
He said we didn't even have to worry about when that hour came, what we would say or do. That he would give it to us at that same, self same time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Have faith. Have faith Hallelujah. in these troubled times and don't worry. Hallelujah. You know, they are beheaded people, Isaac. Yes. They are beheaded people. And Israel is in turmoil with Iraq trying to build nuclear weapons. But that's okay. Yes. If your name, he said, not to rejoice that you, that you trample on the scorpion. Yes. But if your name is written in heaven, yes. then you can rejoice. Yes. I, I rejoice in the night. Yes. I believe tonight, uh, that's my home. Uh, I'm going to go there. Uh, I'm going to see Jesus. Uh, on that cross. Uh, I'm going to be around him. Uh, I'm going to see the pearly gates. Uh, I'm going to see the Christmas scene. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to be with my Lord uh, forever and ever and ever. I believe. I ain't worried that much about ISIS. I ain't worried about them anymore. I ain't worried about what the devil can do. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know right now, you are not lying bait. You are not, you are not food for no lying tonight. There's a greater one. His name is Jesus. The line of the tribe of Judah. He's the strong man today. Amen. He's the strong man of this house early. You're not praying for the for the enemy tonight. Amen. You're not praying. You're not a victim. You got power. 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 The Holy Ghost. You got power to rebuke the enemy. You got power to rebuke sickness. Amen. You got power to rebuke attacks against your finances. Amen. You got power to rebuke the enemy coming after your children and your marriage and your relationships. You have the power in the name of Jesus. He said you have the power of death and life in your tongue. Amen. Amen. Can I not speak over my children and over my marriage and over my finances and over my relationships yes. and over my health? The sweetest thing. Hallelujah. The sweetest thing. One of the sweetest things. And this is no joke. You asked Mary and Kennedy when God the oil. I was sitting in the recliner. And I don't think I didn't even have my eyes open. I was laying back sitting in the recliner. She went and got the oil and come and laid hands on my shoulder. And she said, Oh God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pure. Amen. Pure. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. praise the Lord. She went and got that oil. Yeah. Yes. Praise, praise the Lord. I'll be honest with you right now. Oh, Lord. I feel a bit of pain. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to confess. He said if you confess me, yes. I just speak it and believe it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Mary, yes. I couldn't hold up a 20 ounce pop bottle about two weeks ago. With my right hand. Amen. And I felt stuff popping and cracking in there. They popping and cracking there. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 God. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, you got an enemy. But that's okay. Some of my favorite scripture, guys. Some of my favorite scriptures. You ought to have. I know you guys got some of your favorites. I heard Sister Gail giving some of her favorites Sunday. Some of her favorites are some of my favorites. Amen. You know, I've told uh, I've told new Christians before, you do not have to know this word when you first get saved. You don't have to know it from cover to cover. You don't have to know it from Genesis, Genesis to Revelations. But there are some scriptures that you really need to go ahead Amen. and start learning right away. Amen. That greater is he that abides in me than he that is in the world. Amen. There are some scriptures that you ought to know that while this may be impossible, and nothing is impossible with God. Amen. There are some scriptures that you ought to know. I'm going to go over to 2 Corinthians and I'm going to close on this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says this. Some of my favorite scriptures. Glory to God. I love him. I love him. Praise be to God. He just keeps jumping up. Just keeps jumping out at me. Chapter 10. 
again, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. It's a spiritual battle, y'all. Yes. Yeah. It's a spiritual battle that is yes. being fought. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual battle, Brother Larry. Yes. Yes, it is. There's a spiritual battle over your healing. Come on. There's a spiritual yes, battle over your healing. There's a spiritual battle over your children. Yes. There's a spiritual battle over your marriage. Yes. It is a spiritual battle. Yes, it is. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Amen. Right. But mighty, but mighty, praise God. Mm. Through God is pulling down the strongholds. Mighty through God. I'm going to read this, this scripture right here and I'm done. It says this, and I believe this with my whole heart. This is how I can stand in a crowd in a foreign land and not worry. It said, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Friends, they can, Satan can come after your marriage. He can come after your, your health. He can come after your finances. But I can tell you that you yeah. don't have to be distressed. You just need to look to the Creator and not the Creator. Amen. You need to call on the name of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. I like whenever Jesus was asleep in the ship and it said, <clears throat> I preach a message called Awaken the Master. Praise God. You just need to cry out. Where was Jesus? He was sleeping, but they woke him up. Hey, we need to wake him up tonight. Uh, we need to let him know uh, what afflicts us. Uh, we need to call out our burdens to him. Uh, he said he would give us the desires of our heart. Amen. Yes. Praise be to God. Don't worry, people. Don't worry. Have that joy unspeakable. Amen. Don't worry. Satan is a thief. Amen. He'll steal your peace. He'll steal your joy. Amen. Don't let him. Amen. Don't let him do it. We can be troubled on every side, but not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Don't be in despair. Trust God. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Who of, who of us hasn't been cast down? Amen. Let your faith arise tonight. Who hasn't been down? But God lifted us back up. I've been down a few times, but God raised me. He raised me back up. If God's ever raised you back up, let your faith be increased tonight. You can't have you can't have a testimony without a test. God will allow us to be tried, and that's okay. I, I think Paul said we should we should uh, joy in that when we're being tried. See, because because we know that that God is it's like being tried in the fire like metal. We're going to come out stronger on the other side. He's preparing us. Yes, Lord. See, there's going to be a great battle. There's going to be a great war that's going to be fought in the distant future. I don't know how it is. But, uh, but Jesus comes with his saints to fight this battle. Yes. So we're getting trained up. Uh, he's getting us ready. Uh, we're going to play a part. It's going to be the last battle. Uh, the battle of Armageddon. Yes. Amen. Yes, we don't have to be troubled. We can trust the Lord tonight. We can trust God. I trust him. I trust God tonight. And I ask you to do the same. Amen. You know, I, I think that it was uh, Elisha. How about this? How about this? Let the Spirit speak tonight. Yeah. And God just spoke this to me. Yeah. You know what Elisha did whenever Elijah was getting ready to get caught up? What did he do? He said, give me a double portion, her. And now I feel the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 He said, give me a double portion. Yeah. People quote Paul all the time saying, they have not because you ask God. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's hit our knees tonight. Come on. Let's hit our knees tonight. I don't know if there's a curfew. But let's hit our knees tonight and ask for a double portion. Yeah. We're getting ready to, do, to go into a revival. Yeah. And I pray to God right now that we're not that we're not doing it for no reason. We're not doing it for naught. Yeah. You know, God God has told us that his word would not return void. Amen. Yeah. You know, the, the harvest is in the field. Yeah. It's true. The harvest is, is not in the barn. But the harvest is in the field. Can you bring friends? Yeah. Can you bring family? Yes. Can you bring loved ones? Yes, Lord. Can we get them to come to the house of God that the Lord might speak to them? Hallelujah. That God might move upon them, that the conviction might move upon them. 
that the Holy Spirit might move upon him. I don't care if you ask him in the past. Yes. Before we left the house, I asked somebody tonight to come with me. They're not here. But maybe next time. Right. I'll ask again. Yes. Let's get let's let's get people to come in that we can that we can give them the word of God that maybe yes. the Holy Spirit will work on. Yes. Yes. Let's ask for a double portion yes. that you can that you can lay hands on them and that they'll feel that the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Let's let's pray that God will put words in your mouth that you can speak hope to them. Yes. Because it, I can tell you this, one of the things I've learned from doing street ministry over the years is that most people don't realize the hope that they have in Jesus. Yes. They're like, wow, most of them are ready to receive it yes. because they're broken. Yes. They're battered, they're beaten, they're distressed. Hallelujah. And if you share the gospel with them, they are ready to receive it. Hallelujah. Now, many of them will fall away. Yes. But many of them will receive it. Yes, and yes. some will get rooted and stay. Hallelujah. Let's get some people to come. Let's ask for that. Let's ask for that anointing. Let's ask for that double portion. Yes. 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 